Uh, President Xi's opening remarks calling on both countries to properly manage differences, handle san sensitive issues, trying to basically set the tone. So how, what do you make of this dialogue and attempts at managing the differences? Actually, President Xi's uh, keynote speech delivered the day before yesterday uh, gave very clear kind of signal to the outside world that China is going to continue the momentum uh, to develop a new model of relationship with the United States in every aspect, including uh, strategic uh, issues and also economic issues. So this is actually a future for the uh, Chinese uh, policy toward the United States. And uh, are there any solutions out there when it comes to this spat between China and the United States over steel, do you think? Yeah, I think this is a really a uh, uh, tough job for the two sides. Uh, as you, dis you mentioned just now, the two sides have already narrowed the uh, differences, but I think uh, some structural dispute is uh, still there. So we should be very patient. We should, you know, uh, find a new region to, uh, to talk about these uh, challenges. This is actually a new job for the two governments. And the U.S. Secretary of State saying that the U.S. is not taking sides over the South China Sea dispute, uh, sticking to the principle of the rule of law. How is that playing in China? Uh, of course, the U U.S. position has been changed a little bit in recent uh, years, especially when the United States adopted a policy uh, so-called rebalancing strategy toward the Asia-Pacific region. And uh, to Chinese understanding, actually, the United States did uh, take position in the dispute of the South China Sea. For example, they gave you know, a lot of support to the Philippines and also deployed a lot of military uh, forces in that region. Uh, so China always say uh, they, uh, they, they, they should look, uh, look at the uh, action, not the words. So we are going to, uh, no, to look at the action taken by the United States this time. China wants to focus more on monetary policy by the United States. Why is that? Of course, uh, you know, with the uh, in a wide use of uh, uh, RMB in the world, I think in recent uh, uh, years, uh, you know, this is this has already become very hot topic between the two countries. Uh, uh, I think uh, because the globalization of world economy, uh, the interdependence on each other, especially uh, in economic uh, area, especially the financial system. Uh, gave a very good opportunity for the two countries to cooperate with each other. Uh, but I think there are some worries from the U.S. side that China is going to replace the U.S. dollar you know, uh, system. I, I don't think in that way, in the uh, predictable future, I don't think China uh, can play such a role in the world monetary system. How about the investment quotas? Uh, how much of a breakthrough was that? Uh, I think this is actually a, a deal between the two countries, which is still under its way for the uh, negotiators to continue the discussion. Uh, this might be a, a big deal for the two sides. So I think for the uh, cooperation in this regard, uh, the two sides uh, should you know, uh, have a new vision and uh, take new steps to, to cooperate in this area. And uh, I want to get your take on the climate deal reached by China and the U.S. This is one area where these two countries seem to get along very well. Yeah, uh, let's look at the, you know, the relations between the two sides first. I think in recent years, the cooperation and the competition in some international uh, affairs actually uh, have been uh, you know, uh, intensified. And uh, so uh, sometime, you know, the media or the public always look only at the uh, competition between the two countries. Uh, so we should look at the cooperation for the climate change deal between the uh, two sides and uh, during the Paris conference uh, is, a, is a good example, actually, uh, for the cooperation in international uh, affairs. Actually, with the uh, multipolarization of uh, international politics, uh, no country can play a uh, dominant player uh, in the world issue affairs. And uh, uh, so the only way to you know, uh, give a very good uh, governance of our business in the world is cooperation. So this is actually a good example for the uh, two countries and even for the uh, major powers in the world.
Tang Jin Chun joining us from Beijing. Thanks so much. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.